Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. <laughs> and um, happy Pentecost and happy Shavuot um, to those that are um, going to be joining later. This is going to be an important message about um, this holiday, this um, day of historical outpouring. Um, hey, Sasha, welcome. Um, so this message is going to be about Pentecost. It's going to be about... Um, what God is doing in the earth right now and how we can position ourselves to be able to hear him and how we can... Uh, so really, really great seeing you. Ah, uh, and um, Valerie, hey, welcome. Um, so this message is going to be about um, Pentecost and how we just need to uh, uh, shut away. You know, I mean, we're all in quarantine right now, but we really need to be as intimate as we can with the Lord because there is insight and love and all these things that he wants to give to us but it's just a matter of us you know getting to this table and dining with him um so pentecost begins um today february sorry may uh friday may 29th at sundown and goes until tomorrow um may 30th at sundown at sundown again so i believe you know sasha i think you're on the eastern side of the um world so it's probably i mean it's already pentecost for you hey candida welcome um but i'm going to just be talking a little bit about what pentecost is and um also how um how god is just trying to to reach us and how god is is asking us for one-on-one -on -one time with him um it's it's a really really beautiful holiday um you know this is like the time when the holy spirit came and where power and authority was given to believers, um, hello, um, where, where people began speaking in other languages and where, you know, the, essentially the supernatural broke into uh, the natural realm. So this is a very, very important day, um, you know, spiritually, uh, there have been many prophecies about how um, Pentecost was going to be a literal Pentecost in the same way that Passover was a literal Passover, right? Everybody was shut in their homes. Um, everyone was shut in their homes and and the angel of death was literally outside because there was a plague. So in the same way, hey, Jessica, welcome. In the same way, God um, is saying that, that this is also going to be a literal Pentecost. So um, that was kind of a brief, slightly scattered introduction, but I'm going to pray and then um, we'll begin. The Lord gave me a good amount of scriptures to um, release to everybody, and I know that it will encourage and it will bless um, you all. So please, if you can, stay to the end of this because um, what I'm saying needs to be activated um, today, um, immediately, because today is the holiday. So this is kind of instruction and just, you know, guidance for how to proceed for the next, you know, 24 hours or so. Um, but I also believe that the Lord is going to be doing something all weekend. So just everybody, please position yourself to, um, to meet God and to encounter God and uh, to receive from God because he is willing and he is moving and he is able. So um, let's all say a quick prayer. Very exciting to have, have um, my friends on. Okay, so please bow your head and close your eyes with me. Father, I just thank you, God, so much for um, everybody that is tuning in right now, Lord, for everyone that, that knows you, for everyone that's curious about you, for everyone that wants to know you, Lord. I thank you, God, that your spirit is doing so many incredible things in the earth, Lord. I thank you, God, that you're speaking, um, you're moving, you're, you're showing people your love, you're showing people visions and dreams, and, and, um, and you're showing people even instruction regarding their purpose and what what you've called them to do, Lord. I thank you, God, that in you there is purpose and there is calling and there is hope and there is a future which you promised to us, Lord. So I, I thank you, God, for this this time of just fellowship, Lord, as we are shut in our homes, as we are continuing to quarantine, Lord, we are, we are just like the first century church, Lord, um, locked in the upper room, praying to you, seeking your face, seeking your word, um, and, and preparing ourselves, God, just to meet you in, in a radical and a new way. So, Father, I just pray, God, that you would um, 
Just release your angels, Lord, to every single person that's listening now and those that will listen later, God, that they would know that they're not alone, that they would know that there are good presences in their home, not not wicked ones, Lord. I pray, God, for war, warring angels, for militarized angels, just to, just to um, lock in and, and to comfort, Lord, um, your people and those that are listening to this, Lord. I just thank you, God, for for lavishing so much love on us at this time. And um, I pray that you would anoint this message, carry this message to those that need to hear it um, so that we can, we can prepare for this supernatural Pentecost. God, I love you, and I thank you, and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, awesome. So um, the Lord gave me to begin uh, a passage from Luke 14. So I'm going to begin at Luke 14, verse 16. This is um, Jesus describing um, the the banquet of heaven. Uh, you know, he talks about, amen. He talks about um, what you know. He gives so many para parables, analogies of what the kingdom of heaven is like, and because it's a spiritual place, um, it it has to be talked about through things that we see through natural things right so it has to be analogized um so this is you know another a beautiful beautiful um parable that he gives concerning what the kingdom of heaven is like and what the call to the kingdom of heaven is like so um, we're going to be talking about food we're going to be talking about dining we're going to be talking about um having intimate fellowship with the lord um you know in preparation for this evening so it says, Jesus said to him, a man was once giving a great supper and invited many. And at the out, okay, hold on. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so it says, a man was once giving a great supper and invited many. And at the hour for the supper, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, come, for all is now ready. Right? So this is... This is the supper. This is the banquet of the Lord. This is um, people rejoicing in heaven that he's talking about. Hey, Leonard, welcome. Good to see you. It says, but they all alike began to make excuses and to beg off. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I have to go out and see it. I beg you, have me excused, right? So someone gave an excuse to the Lord concerning why they couldn't make it to this banquet. Um, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to examine and put my approval on them. I beg you, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and because of this, I am unable to come. So the servant came and reported these answers to his master, right? Then the master of the house said in wrath to his servant, go quickly into the great streets and the small streets of the city and bring in here the poor and the disabled and the blind and the lame. And the servant returning said, Sir, what you have commanded me to do has been done, and yet there is still room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and urge and constrain them to yield and come in so that my house may be filled. It's um, so, so, so powerful, this passage. You know, it really speaks to the heart of God, you know, he's like looking for people to come to this banquet that he's prepared, you know, he's, he's given everyone an invitation and he's saying, um, you know, please, you know, come, everything's prepared, everything's been ready, this is the hour, this is the time um, for, for people to, to dine with me. And one after the other, people give excuses as to why they can't go in, you know, they, they, they don't believe that they were invited, they don't believe that there is a feast, they don't believe that, um, that, that they were selected or they were chosen, um, and they prioritize other things. They prioritize um, you know, maybe their, their marriage or, or a person, or they prioritize their land or their business, or they prioritize um, different possessions. You know, there are so many excuses that people have as to why they won't get to this feast. Um, and you know this is really talking about you know salvation of course but you know specifically for today the lord is wanting me to talk about pentecost and the banquet that we are supposed to have during pentecost i was talking to um my close friend yay awesome sarah and coconut welcome 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 
Um, this is an important message. Um, but I was talking to my close friend uh, yesterday, Jessica, and, um, and you know, she was asking, you know, what are we supposed to do? Um, hey, welcome. She was saying, you know, what are we supposed to do for Pentecost? And um, I said, you know, just ha have a dinner, have like a nice dinner with the Lord and, and um, you know, talk, talk to him and bring out, a, you know, food and pour yourself a glass of wine or whatever and just fellowship with the Lord. And, um, and I kind of just said that. And then as I began seeking the Lord, he was telling me that he actually really wanted me to talk about what that looks like and how to... Um, and how to dialogue with him as we seek him, you know, during dinner tonight and during, you know, brec breakfast tomorrow morning or whatever happens during this 24-hour Sabbath. Um, so I'm going to continue reading. It says, um, oh, 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 so, you know, concerning the servant that is the one that's supposed to go out and to tell people that there's a banquet, the Lord is saying that we need to notify others we need to notify our friends we need to notify our family members that um that you know of course salvation is is here and we need to you know be saved but specifically for this weekend and specifically for today that we need to notify people of of pentecost that pentecost is today um if you google it the calendar will say that it takes place on sunday but in reality the pentecost took place during the feast of weeks which was shavuot which is the Jewish holiday, which um, which takes place according to the Hebrew calendar on Friday. It takes place during the Sabbath. It takes place from sundown to sundown, Friday to Saturday. Um, so if people don't um, encounter the Lord, you know, tonight, then, um, and they're expecting it to be on Sunday, then they might actually miss a visitation or they might actually miss um, what God is doing. Um, you know, we're actually not even supposed to really worship on Sunday, you know, it's that's the first day of the week, and God gave an, a commandment, an ordinance for all generations to worship on the Sabbath on on Saturday. Um, so, really, God is wanting us to also recalibrate the day that we consecrate to Him because it's really not supposed to be Sunday. Um, but anyway, so back to the passage, we're supposed to notify, you know, we're supposed to notify our friends and our loved ones that that we need to be in this quiet place. In, in prayer, in fellowship, you know, with our word, with our families, um, in unity, in one accord um, during, during this time, during Pentecost. Um, you know, in the book of Acts, it talks about how all the disciples were united in one room, the upper room, they were in one accord, they were petitioning heaven, and then the Holy Spirit came, and the Holy Spirit flooded that space and filled them and radically changed them and, complete, and sent, them, sent them on a... Um, launch them actually into a uh to their destinies into their future into their callings they began walking with greater authority they began um healing the sick and they began raising the dead and they began just doing all these miracles and as we know as we've been talking about this pentecost is the culmination of 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 many 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 things i mean um you know the all the messages are kind of leading up to this this moment these culminating moments so um, we just have to, we just have to dine with the Lord. That's what He's asking us to do. He's asking us to dine, and to um, kind of build on that notion. The Lord gave me a few more scriptures. So in Revelations three twenty, it says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him, and he with me." Right. So the first thing that we have to do is to, you know, recognize the voice of the Lord, and we have to open our heart to receive him. Um, for those that have yet to receive Christ, um, I'm going to say a prayer probably closer to the end, but it's quite simple. You know, you just invite the Lord into your heart um, to, to dine with you. And what does the dining mean? The dining means to dialogue. The dining means to um, eat and to consume and to um, be merry and to laugh and to um, just fellowship, you know, in the same way that some of us would like to dine with one another or dine with a spouse. It's supposed to be a, a beautiful and enriching time where we're celebrating, where we're feeling festive. And, um, you know, for those that live alone, like myself, it, it's, you know, I know that I never live alone. I don't really live alone because, you know, the Lord says, never will I leave you. Hey, Portia. 
never will I forsake you. So, um, so it's kind of just an opportunity for those that are living alone to just, you know, make a nice dinner and say, Lord, I just want to, you know, have a dinner date with you. I just want to um, converse with you. I just want to, you know, think about what you're thinking about. I want to be flooded with your thoughts. Um, so we have to invite him into this. So step one, uh, send an invitation to the Lord. He gave me another passage um, concerning this feast that we're supposed to engage in um, tonight and for the subsequent nights. Um, it says in Isaiah 25, verse 6, <clears throat> And on this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make for all his people a feast of rich things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. So this is talking about um, what the feast is like. The feast is full of um, abundance. Wine, wine on the lees is, is like fermented wine that has yeast that adds more flavor and it's aged in, in a different way. It's like special wine. It's like the, supposedly the best of the best wine. I have not had it, but you know, I believe um, what the internet says about it. <laughs> um, but the point that the Lord wanted me to make concerning this scripture is that the feast is on Mount Zion. It says, and on this mount shall the Lord of hosts make for all his people a feast. So where is the feast? The feast is on a mount. The feast is on a high place. Um, the Amplified cla Classic translation says, and on this mount Zion shall the Lord of hosts make for all peoples a feast of rich things, symbolic of his coronation festival inaugurating the reign of the Lord on the earth. In the, in the wake of a background of gloom, judgment, and terror, right? So I think we all can agree that behind us, around us, is a backdrop of gloom, judgment, and terror, um, unfortunately. But in the midst of it, there's a coronation festival. In the midst of it, there's an inauguration of the reign of the Lord on the earth, right? And it's a feast that we're invited to and we're called to participate in. And this feast, again, is on Mount Zion. So um, this is going to be good. So, so the question is, where is Mount Zion and how do we get to Mount Zion? Okay. Um, so Mount Zion is, it's a spiritual place. It's a, a promised place um, that exists. And, um, and Hebrews 12 talks a little bit about what is on Mount Zion. So it says, um, you have come to Mount Zion, even to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless multitudes of angels in festal, festal gathering. Okay, I'm just going to read that again. It's so wild. You have come to Mount Zion, even to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless multitudes of angels in festal gathering. Okay, and to the church or the assembly of the firstborn who are registered as citizens in heaven, that would be us, and to the God who is judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous, the redeemed of heaven, who have been made perfect, right? So it's, it's a, a heavenly dwelling place um, that is full of angelic activity. It's where, where the angels are celebrating and they're singing and they're praising God. And um, it's where the spirit of God is just vibrant and alive and where the saints have, have assembled, right? It's the assembly of the firstborn who are registered as citizens in heaven, right? We're, we're citizens in heaven. Um, there's a passage that says that we are ambassadors from Christ and, and um, what does it say? We are, uh, we're strangers on the earth, right? We have a heavenly dwelling. So this is about, this is talking about our, our citizenship. You know, where, what, what nation are we citizens of? It would be, um, it would be heaven, it would be Zion, Mount Zion is, is our dwelling place. And so it says, and to Jesus the mediator, the go-between agent of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy, a better and nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel, right? So Jesus is, is there as well. This is, this, is, um, this is also where Jesus is. I mean, Jesus is everywhere, but this is also um, a place where he resides. And um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of the spiritual place where the feast is taking place, right? So again, we're thinking about dining with the Lord, um, partaking in, in communion with the Lord, 
dialogue, conversation, laughter with the Lord, and it's a festal, um, it's a festal gathering that, that Pentecost is supposed to be. So um, to kind of talk about how we get to this place, the Lord gave me two more passages, and um, then we'll kind of, I'll kind of summarize. But it says in Ephesians 2, it says, Ephesians 2, verse 6, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So right now we are in, in the coming ages, right? This is a text that was written in the first century. So we're living in these coming ages um, that are designed and destined to show the incomparable riches of God's grace through our lives, right? So we've been talking about all of the inventions and the businesses and, and the um, elevated place that we're all getting to. And it's, 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 uh, it's expressed to us through the kindness of, of Christ Jesus and through um, his mercy towards us. Um, but it says that God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So we, as spiritual beings, at, you know, spirit, soul, and body, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So our spirit man has the capacity to move in heavenly places, um, has access to heavenly places and heavenly realms, right? Um, there's so many just supernatural encounters in the Bible, you know, you know, where people were taken up, right? Enoch was taken up and, um, and uh, you know Moses locked eyes with God face to face. You know these are a lot of these were spiritual encounters that people had, visitations that they had, and and even you know the Book of Revelation talks about, uh, and the books of Ezekiel. So many books, so many prophetic books talk about the angels of the Lord um, guiding, guiding people, guiding people. You know, awakening people and then guiding their spirit man to see things that the Lord is wanting. To show them, right? So visions that, that Ezekiel had were were um, delivered to him through the escorting of an angel, right? So, so we are seated in heavenly realms, and so because we're seated in heavenly realms, we have access to Mount Zion. We have access to see what Mount Zion is like. We have access to rejoice with the angels um, on Mount Zion, and um, and. To kind of build on that, the Lord gave me um, Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2, where it says, <clears throat> If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the rich and eternal treasures that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And set, this is it, and set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth, right? So this is this is how we get to that heavenly place, right? It's through setting our minds on things that are above. It's on setting our mind on on Christ, on 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 His holiness, on His sanctity, on um, on on just God and, and eternity and all these beautiful things that are above our kind of worldly qualms and our, our worldly mm, challenges, right? So. So um, ultimately, the Lord is saying that during this Pentecost, you know, long story short, God is saying that during this Pentecost, we need to dine with him. We need to um, meet with him at this table, at this feast. We need to make sure that we get to this spiritual place where we can um, hear from him clearly and we can see him and we can celebrate with him. And the way that we get to this feastal gathering is by setting our minds on his holiness and looking to things above, not looking to our circumstances, not looking to, you know, the stimulus checks or the lack of stimulus checks, not looking to our business, not looking to, um, not looking to, you know, even our, 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 our fret, um, my gosh, it's so loud, not looking to, um, not looking to any lack that we might seemingly have right now, not looking to not looking to worldly things, not looking to earthly things, but really being transfixed on the holiness of God and, and asking God to reveal more of, of 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 his holiness, that we would have a reverential fear, that we would be in, in awe and wonder 
and um, gratitude at the fact that we can commune with him, at the fact that we can dine with him. And um, it's really just a beautiful invitation that he's calling us into um, for these remaining three, three days. Um, it's a time of great, great, great intimacy. And um, hey, Evelina, so good to see you. And it's a time um, just of fellowship, just to really get into God's presence, to get into God's face, as we've been working towards, but today is really like the, cul the culmination. And the thing is, I don't know exactly what the Lord is going to do, but I do know that um, He is going to pour out something in the spiritual realm for His people. And that could be a stirring up of our gifts, that could be the extension of new languages, that could be um, increased vision, greater prophetic accuracy, um, greater revelation, greater understanding. All, all, the, all the fruits of the Spirit of God are being amplified during this time. And it's not just for the sake of us enjoying, you know, enjoying the benefits of spiritual growth and maturity. It's for the sake of witnessing. It's for the sake of going out. It's, 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 a, com it's a moment of commissioning. It's a moment of um, empowerment and authority being released unto his people. So the way that we get that, again, <clears throat> is just by being as present with him as we can in the spiritual realm, in, in this place, you know, Mount Zion. Um, just try to get there. Just meditate on the Lord. Meditate on his word. Um, read the book of Acts. Read what happened in the first century and pray and ask God to do it again, to do it for you, to do it for your family members, to, to um, reveal himself to your friends, the friends that you've been praying for, the friends that you've been um, fasting for. And uh, I, I absolutely believe and I know that God is going to, um, to meet a lot of us um, in a radical way. Hey, welcome. In a radical way um, over the coming days. So hallelujah to that. And um, I am going to, amen, yes. Philippians 4.8 says, think on things that are pure and lovely. Hey, my brother, welcome. Good to see your name. Um, so that, that's ultimately, you know, that's, that's the message. The Lord just wanted me to encourage everybody to um, read at least um, the first four chapters of Acts. And um, during your dinner, during your time of fellowship, also to get off of Instagram, to get off of social media. You know, the, the thing about the Sabbath, <laughs> hey, the thing about the Sabbath is that, you know, the Jews, they don't do anything with electricity, right? They, they like those that really follow it strictly, it is so loud outside. Those that follow it strictly don't even go into elevate. They, they don't touch the buttons of elevators. Um, I was you know, in Israel, and um, there was something called a Sabbath elevator that, that stopped on every, every floor. So people would get into this elevator and they would just go to each floor so that they didn't have to touch or press a button um, because they were refraining from touching anything electrical, right? So we actually need to adopt this mentality for the next three days. Like just really, you know, don't turn on your television, get off, you know, get off of Instagram and just dine with the Lord, eat with the Lord, break communion. Um, break communion. Um, I just want to say also that, uh, that, that, that we should take communion today. And I forgot to say that in the beginning, but please, for those that want to take communion, um, for those that may be taking communion for the first time, it is like one of the most beautiful experiences. So please just grab, you know, a cup of water or an orange juice. If you have wine, grab a tiny glass of wine. Um, and, and some type of bread, a cracker, or a cookie, or something. Candida, I, I'm not sure. I have to see um, what the Lord leads me to do. I'm not sure if I'll be, um, I'll be continuing to come on live. I might come on sporadically, but I don't believe that I'll be on every single day like I have for the last 29 days, <laughs> which has been intense. Um, but yeah, so please, everybody, you know, just take a moment quickly. Go with your phone to your kitchen and grab um, you know, a cracker or grab, you know, a little tiny glass of wine and we can pray over it in a second. Um, and then one more thing the Lord wanted me to say is that also during this time, please really immerse yourself in worship. Um, listen to worship, listen to soaking worship. Um, you know, worship is different, different than praise. You know, praise is awesome and praise is great and praise excites and praise, you know, gets you to clap your hands and jump up and, and 
pull down your blessings and all these things. But God is wanting us to get to the place of worship, a very, very deep worship to flow in worship where um, where we can feel our spirit kind of crying out to him through song and through, um, you know, playing of instruments, playing, you know, your flute or your violin or your piano or whatever you have. And um, there are there are really, really incredible prophetic worshipers um uh, one of them being upper room people upper room it also makes sense with the book of acts it's called upper room worship and um they they just sing about the glory of god and they sing about the holiness of god and they get to this deep place where they they get beyond the lyrics of the song they're no longer singing the lyrics of the song the the depth of them is crying out to the depth of god and um it is just a very, very, very rich place that, you know, brings me to tears, brings a lot of people to tears. It's like when you get to that deep place in worship, you know that you're in the throne room. You know that you've entered Zion. You know that you're in another spiritual place, you know. So um, so aim and uh, try to get to, to that deep place of worship. Um, again, Upper Room is a great, great, great um, group. You know, some of their 45-minute sets... They start out with a lyrical song and then it just begins to flow and becomes something um, so beautiful and so deep and so rich. Um, okay, so that is, that's pretty much the message. And um, I'm gonna now say a prayer to kind of seal all of that. And then we will take communion. And, um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll say this prayer. So Father, I just thank you, God, for every single person. Please bow your heads and close your eyes with me. <laughs> so Lord, I just thank you, God, for every single person that got onto this um, broadcast, those that will get on, those that are hungry for you, those that are thirsty for you, those that are are desperate, Lord, for you to become alive to them, Lord. Um, God, I thank you that your spirit is not dead, that you're not um, you know, an idol of wood or stone, but you're active and moving and audible, Lord. And so, God, I pray, Father, that this Pentecost would be a Pentecost that revives every dead thing within us, that this Pentecost would be a Pentecost where we feel your fire burning and bubbling within us, where our old self is completely taken away, where our old self is completely burned away, and where we can um, just be refined completely, and we can be launched into our destinies, launched into our future, Lord, where we can receive um, the power and the authority, the revelation, the insight, the wisdom that you gave to your um, first century church, Lord. I pray, God, that the fire of God would fall upon every single person that is listening to me during this Pentecost, Lord, as we seek you, as we strive to enter into your presence. Lord, may we be radically changed. May we know without a shadow of a doubt that you visited us. May we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that um, that, that we're chosen by you, that, that you exist, that, you've, that you're doing something in the earth, Lord. I pray that we would never be the same, that this would be a, a pivotal moment, God, for every single person that is listening, every single believer, Lord, those that have been believing for, for decades and those that have been believing for months or weeks, God. You are no respecter of persons, so Lord, I pray, God, that your spirit would just flood those that have received you, Lord, flood with your power, flood with your might, and, and, and strengthen and build us up, God, for the work that is ahead. God, I thank you for just your love, and I thank you, I thank you for sweet, 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 and holy communion. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, and now I'm going to say a quick prayer for those that have yet to receive Christ. Um, lots of prayer during this message. It's kind of longer because it's a holiday, but um, this is a message for those that want to receive Christ that have um, yet to invite Jesus into their lives and have yet to see, to receive the Messiah and have yet to be reconciled to the personhood of God and be adopted into um, this holy nation um, that has been prophesied about, talked about, written about since way before, you know, way before Christ. Um, so uh, please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Come into my life and save me. I want to know you and I want to experience you. Make me come alive. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. That was deep. Okay. Hey, welcome. <clears throat> and, um, 
And so now I hope everybody has their elements. This is a lot of prayer, but I hope everybody has their elements. We're going to um, take communion. Also, I, I wanted to say um, that I am, for these last three days, taking um, an offering. Um, you know, there's... Anyway, I don't, I don't feel like I need to explain the significance of, of offerings, but please, everybody, seek the Lord concerning whether or not He wants you to sow into... Um, the words that have been released, you know, don't think about it as, you know, giving money to me. It's really not about me. It's about giving money or honoring God with finances, with your finances for the information that he has released, for the knowledge that has been released, for the um, training that has taken place, for the acceleration that has taken place. So don't think about me at all. Just consider the Lord and consider um, a gift that you want to give to him if, if he leads you to give a gift. And um, I'm just, you know, I'm, that's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to say this probably in a different way for the next two days. So um, praise God for that. Now, um, oh, the way that I'm receiving an offering is either through PayPal or through um, Venmo. Um, Venmo, um, the Venmo information is evan-hall-1010 and then the PayPal is in, in my bio. So that's all I'm going to say. You know, I'm not... I'm not hungry for money, please, people, you know. Um, this is just, this is how the kingdom of God operates, you know. You, your, your heart, uh, where your heart is, there your treasure is also. So um, the places that we put our money show us what we value, show us where our heart is, and show, us, show God where our heart is also. Um, amen. So now let's all take communion. Amen. So um, if everybody has their cracker and their um, their wine or their um, soda or their diet Pepsi or their oat milk please um, grab it amen I um, I have some I'm not gonna say what I have but <laughs> thank you all for joining this is this is an important moment so um, please uh, Close your eyes and bow your heads with me, and uh, we'll start with the bread. Hey, welcome. We are taking communion. So start. we'll start with the bread. So, um, Father, we just thank you, God, for your body, Lord, that was broken for us. Lord, we don't take this moment lightly. We reverence you. We thank you, God, for enduring all forms of torture in the physical in your flesh, Lord, you, you received beatings, you received lashings, you received um, s s people spat on you, people ridiculed you, people mocked you, yet you endured all of that for the sake of us, for the sake of bringing us into relationship with you. You, you, you bled and you died and, and you, you submitted your will to the point of death, God. So few of us are willing to submit anything to you, God, but you submitted your whole life you submitted, you said it was painful, you said it was challenging, you said that if, it, if this burden could be taken, if the cup could be taken from you, um, then so be it, but not your will, or the Father's will be done. So God, I just thank you, God, for your body that was broken for us, Lord, that, that paid for our sin, that um, brought us into right relationship with you, God. And um, we just take this moment to break bread with you and to remember, or so simple just to remember the sacrifice that was made to remember the access that was given through through your body and through your blood so um, as we take this bread we um, take in um, life we take in healing we take in strength we take in fortification we take in um, power we take in authority we take in um, just com just re rejuvenated cells in our body, Lord, everything concerning our flesh, Lord, may it be rejuvenated and revitalized as we take your bread, as we take this communion. Okay, amen. So go ahead and take, take the bread. And now time for the blood. So, um, Lord, we just thank you for your blood that was poured out for us, God. We thank you again for the sacrifice or the blood that was sprinkled on the mercy seat the blood that made atonement for all of our sins the blood that um 
that, that cleanses, that washes us white as snow, Lord. I thank you that because of your blood, you don't see our iniquities, you don't see our flaws, you don't see our faults, but you, um, but you, you, you look at us through the blood, you look at us through the sacrifice <clears throat> of Christ. So Lord, we just remember your blood and we plead the blood of Jesus over all of us and our family members, asking for greater purification, asking for um, just, just, just the forgiveness, Lord, of our, all of our sins. And we even repent now for anything that we've done, for everything that we've done, even today and this week, God. We repent and we, um, we ask you to continue changing us and continue purging us. So we drink this blood, we drink this wine, we drink this water, whatever it is, we drink it in remembrance of you, God. We love you and we thank you. Amen. Okay. All right. And so um, that's the communion. And I pray that this launches everybody into greater communion for the next three days. Um, greater fellowship with God for the next few days. This is a very, very, very wildly important Pentecost. This is like the, supposed to be the Pentecost of Pentecost. And I believe that we'll see something just miraculous. And I know that something will happen. And in, in, something's been happening in the spiritual realm. Something will continue to happen in the spiritual realm. So just um, please you know, tune in, get to that place of greater intimacy, get to that place of deep worship, Turn off your phones and just um, dine with the Lord. Um, I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>